here in the heartland. This is the working man. These are the fields of dreams of America. No, you can't take that away. Cause I want to stay here in the heartland. Today we're going to talk about Elmer Layden. Elmer Layden was born on May 4th in 1903 in Davenport, Iowa. He'd be a 1921 graduate of Davenport Central High School where he would excel both in track, basketball, and football. Following his high school days, Elmer Layden would go to the University of Notre Dame where he would play for legendary coach Newt Rockney and the Irish. He would become the starting fullback while at the University of Notre Dame and he would be one of the legendary four horsemen of Notre Dame. At 162 pounds, he was the largest and fastest running back in the backfield, and he developed a straight line dive that was instrumental in Notre Dame's 1924 national championship season. Following Notre Dame, Layton would play professional football for the Hartford Blues, the Brooklyn Horsemen, and the Rock Island Independents, while also starting his coaching career in 1925. Elmer Layton was hired as the head football coach at Columbia College in Dubuque, Iowa, which would later become known as Loris College. And following two seasons at Columbia, he would then be hired as the head football coach at Duquesne University, where he would truly leave an impact on football. Now, Elmer Layton was the first coach to integrate the athletic programs with welcoming African American athletes. While at Duquesne University, he'd move the home games to Forbes Field, where he would pioneer playing night games under the lights. He would also develop two sets of uniforms so fans could better distinguish between the opponents. In 1934, Notre Dame came calling, and Elmer Layden would leave Duquesne University to become the athletic director and head football coach at the University of Notre Dame. He would lead the Irish for seven seasons, and leading them to a record of 47-13-3 and an unclaimed national championship in 1938. While at Notre Dame, on a story of Iowa interest, Elmer Layton uh, developed a series between the University of Iowa and the Fighting Irish. And in 1938, the Hawkeyes, led by Niall Kinnick, would defeat the University of Notre Dame 7-6. Elmer Layton would leave Notre Dame to become the first commissioner of the National Football League. Serving from 1941 to 1946 as the NFL commissioner, Elmer Layton would lead the NFL through the World War II years, he would develop a uniform league schedule, and in 1943 he would declare helmets as part of mandatory pieces of equipment. And at the conclusion of World War II, Elmer Layden made sure the Star Spangled Banner was played before every game, stating that the national anthem should be as much as part of the game as the kickoff. After completing his five-year contract as the first NFL commissioner, Layden would leave to become a successful businessman in the Chicago area. And in June 30th, 1973, he would pass away at the age of 70. Layden was a leader both on and off the football field, never boasting but allowing his achievements to speak for themselves. Elmer Layden was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1951 as a charter member. As a reminder to all our visitors, all Iowa students have free admission to the Iowa Hall of Pride thanks to Musco Lighting. Welcome to the Iowa Hall of Pride 360 Experience. View the vast topography of Iowa. Take in the Iowa State Fair. Experience the football playoffs up at UNI. Take a look at the Iowa State football game. The opportunities are endless at the Iowa Hall of Pride in the 360 room. The 360 room was made possible by our friends at Prairie Meadows. As a recipient of the Prairie Meadows Legacy Grant, the Iowa Hall of Pride renovated our Spirit of Competition Theater into a full 360 experience. With the bike trail system that continues to grow here, with our water trail system we're continuing to work on, and with the places that are already in place here, with uh, Iowa Hall of Pride, the events there in Wells Fargo, and being able to continue to promote and develop those arenas and those facilities so that we can impact that next generation. Polk County and Prairie Meadows is instrumental in really putting Des Moines not only on top of the map here in Iowa, but putting us on the national level also. Discover more at the Iowa Hall of Pride. For our third segment this week, we want to give a special shout out to Rod Hill in Kyoto 6th grade for visiting the Hall of Pride. Mr. Hill's been coming for 15 years to the Hall, so follow his lead and book your visit today. It's been a long, long time. It's probably been 15 years? Yep, yep, yep. Is that about where we're at? Yep. 
And uh, what do the students and what do you enjoy about the experience and the takeaways from the Hall of Pride? Well, the Hall of Pride is full of activities, full of school stuff. Um, we enjoy the movie at the beginning, it's a very educational part, and then we enjoy walking around and looking at all the technology, all the different schools that have done great things uh, around Iowa, and then of course the kids also enjoy the fun games back in the back game room too. Hi, I'm Margie from the Iowa Hall of Pride. I am the volunteer coordinator and we're always looking for new volunteers to come here and help us. I'm Terry. I'm the person you call when you want to come with your family, with your group, with your school. Give me a call or email me and we can book your tour. We hope to see you soon. Look forward to seeing you at the Iowa Hall of Pride.